Well, we've made a bit of progress recently in increasing diversity in the UK. Um, but the problem is that a lot of that's in non-executive um, appointments to boards, not people really actually running boards. And we haven't uh, diversified the background so much of the people who are taking up those jobs. Diverse groups of people with a good gender balance and other, indeed other kinds of balance make better decisions. You know, they better reflect the views of the customers that the business is working with and they basically avoid groupthink. The research is pretty overwhelming that diversity delivers three things. Firstly, it delivers superior financial return. Secondly, the more diverse you are, the better your culture, the higher the employee engagement. And lastly, it de-risks decision making. The number one cause of the biggest corporate failures was groupthink, and that's, a, that's kind of a code name for a bunch of white, middle-aged men <laughs> sat around a table with similar educational and social backgrounds taking all the decisions. We are not very far down the journey of making boards diverse. I think although the business case is well understood, I think the action has been slow. There are seven female chief executives of the FTSE 100. That's a well-known statistic. There are actually eight men called Dave running FTSE 100 companies. So there are more men called Dave running the nation's biggest companies than there are women across the board. The World Economic Forum projects that it'll be 170 years at this rate before we get anywhere near gender parity. A lot of it comes down to unconscious bias. Bosses of companies, they're not all up on the latest team dynamic theory. They tend to use their experience and their kind of gut instinct, if you like, to build their leadership teams. They build teams that look like the successful teams they have led on their way up the ladder. Then the pipeline just doesn't come through, and the pipeline is the thing that is blocking more female chief executives. I've been saying this for a long time about the pipeline. So we need a pipeline of women, time and time again. The reason why there are more men on the boards is that there are just the availability of more men with more experience. So if we harness the pipeline and really push the women coming on internally, you know, you look at law firms, there is a ceiling sometimes, whether it's career breaks, whether it's childcare, whatever else. Harness those, put them on leadership courses, send them out on training. Women actually get to a certain point and they look up and they think, oh my God, I don't like what I see. That's not me. That's not how I want to work. And also, it doesn't fit with my life. I, you know, I want a family. I'm working flexibly. My husband may or may not help. And still not enough men are participating in paternity leave and helping. Paternity leave. The reason why the uptake is only 3% is because we don't have cultures that actually are used to it. So the men don't want to take it. If we change our culture, if there were more senior partners in law firms, accountancy firms, in the companies that I represent, uh, and the people that I represent who suffer discrimination, uh, if more of those people visibly taking the paternity leave, then our cultures would improve. I'm a great believer that if you take transparency and targets and combine them with media spotlight and constant talk about the issue, you can get progress. Women on boards is the first step. Women are half the population, so hardly a minority. And what the research is showing is that firms that achieve the gender diversity are much more likely to achieve ethnic diversity and other kinds of diversity.